Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 11th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Diego, California. One of the big events last week, of course, was the Google Docs OAuth flash phishing attack. While Google was pretty quick in blocking the account responsible for the attack, it still showcased how OAuth can be abused. A much more common scenario is applications that users no longer need or applications that request many more privileges than are actually required to use the application. Rob has a nice diary today about how to review the OAuth permissions on various social media accounts. You will often find a list of applications within your account privacy or security settings, but every site does a little bit different. So Rob gives you a lot of the direct URLs that get you to the area where you do adjust and review these application permissions, something you probably should put in your calendar every few months uh, to do. And Apple apparently is working on a system to warn users of firmware updates or firmware changes, I should say. Firmware integrity is a long ongoing issue and has been moved more and more into the spotlight again after recent leaks of government hacking tools that are used to manipulate firmware in order to gain persistence on exploited machines. Now, Apple's proposed system would warn the user of changes made to the firmware and then would give the user the option to transmit these changes to Apple for review. So similar like a crash dialog that you often see where it tells you an application crashed and uh, you can submit details about the crash to Apple or uh, to whoever made the application. The tool that does review the firmware EFI check uh, was part of the beta version of the current version of macOS Sierra, but uh, was removed in the final release. It was again added uh, to a recent beta version and was spotted there again, which may indicate that it may show up in a soon to be released future version of OS X Sierra. It appears that the more recent version added this option the earlier versions uh, just uh, sent a feedback to Apple no matter what uh, now this time you have the option but uh, some of the beta testers report that there are uh, false positives and that may be something that's holding Apple back in releasing the tool officially uh, because it's not quite worked out yet uh, where these uh, false positives uh, come from. Insecure Updates are not only common among desktop applications and for things like uh, biases in some cases, but also for mobile applications. It is in particularly sad if a security application is affected. And recently, Context uh, Security took a closer look at some mobile security applications and found that Panda Mobile Security is vulnerable to a man in attack during updates. Panda now released an update, so if you're using the application, then please update. The application is, as far as I know, only available on Android. And if you're using an Asus RT router, it's time to update that one as well. As usual for these type of devices, the web interface for the device features a set of vulnerabilities that reveal passwords, can be used to change configurations or detect the exact version of the router used. And uh, with this, of course, the user, the attacker, could then find flaws in the router. In addition to the standard best practice of not exposing the admin interface and changing the password, you should also update to the just released version of the firmware which does fix these flaws. 
And the Broken Browser blog has an interesting post about a same origin policy bypass in Microsoft Edge. Actually, this week here in San Diego, I'll be teaching our Defending Web Application class and I'll be talking about same origin policy quite a bit because it is one of those very important concepts in browser security. The idea of same origin policy is that HTML and JavaScript loaded from different sites is is isolated from each other. Basically, each one is running in its own sandbox, meaning code loaded from the two, two sites cannot send requests to the other side, and uh, local storage and other uh, features are separated uh, from each other. This same origin bypass trick uh, that uh, the broken browser block here found is quite interesting and shows how hard it is to implement uh, this feature correctly. Because of course there are certain ways how different sites or a browser can talk and exchange data between a different site. It all starts uh, with confusing the browser about the referrer for a site. This is done by opening a window to a site that would like to show up as a referrer and then assigning this new window handle to the window that opened it. Now, doing this straightforward is actually blocked in Microsoft Edge as it should be, but apparently you can actually assign a window handle to a JavaScript math object and that is not blocked and uh, no idea really how they figured it out or why that even works, but uh, I'm not enough of a JavaScript wizard uh, really uh, to get into this. Next, uh, this issue is used to open a window that will require the pro that will redirect the browser to a data Data URL. Now, data URLs are quite often used in phishing and such because the data URL will contain the actual content of the page that's being displayed. So with this, the attacker can then display malicious pop-ups in other sites, like uh, for example, a fake login uh, dialog. And talking about interesting blog posts about exploits, Google's a project series featuring a blog showing how to exploit a recent Linux kernel vulnerability via packet sockets. If a particular Linux distribution is exploitable, it uh, depends uh, on the user having privileges to create the required sockets. In Ubuntu, users do have the privilege. And then of course, uh, this bug leads to privilege escalation. Android, potentially vulnerable, but uh, the CapNet raw privilege that you need is actually somewhat more limited. Only specific components have access uh, to that. So exploitation isn't straightforward forward, but the blog post does include working exploit code that does bypass some of the security features that you commonly find in Ubuntu. A patch for Ubuntu was already released and a patch for Android should be coming soon. This is really a kernel vulnerability, not a problem with these particular distributions, just these distributions happen to be vulnerable. And a correction about yesterday's Mac malware story. There are two different pieces of malware really that got a little bit mixed up there. The malware included in Handbrake was Proton and Snake. The other malware I mentioned showed up only as a fake Adobe installer. Now, uh, Snake does not come as part of Adobe. Uh, they may include it just to make it more plausible, but the trick it gets you to install the malware is by claiming it being an Adobe Flash Player installer. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.